All right, we're gonna fix this nasty gouge right here in this Mini Cooper. And stuff I'm gonna be using today is the higher quality urethane, primers, sealers, all that. Uh, you can do this repair with uh, you know, your like rattle cans, primers, and whatnot. Uh, biggest problem you run with that is well, that stuff's lacquer and you get a lot of shrinkage later on down the road, you know, three, six months later. So while I'm doing this repair, I'll show some techniques you can use if you're going to, you know, be on a budget, use cheaper stuff. I'll show ways where you can minimize the shrinkage so the repair looks uh, better down the road. Uh, all right, let's get on it. Okay, the first thing you want to do before you do anything is you're going to want to wipe this whole panel down with wax and grease remover. Um, because there's any that on there and you start sanding on it, you can dig it into the paint and then it just makes it that much harder to get out and then you can start running into fish eyes and other problems uh, when you go to, to repaint this. So. And then the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to use the DA now. I got 220 on here. I use 180 also. And what we're going to do is just kind of feather this out where that gouge is. <laughs> See, it's all gouged out. We're gonna have to use a little bit of body. Okay, one more thing. When we sand this out, you want to feather it out. And what I mean by that is you see the metal here, and then you can see the primer, and then you see the color coat, and then you can see the clear. And you want layers like that. And you want it smooth so when you run your, your hand across it, you can't feel an edge. So make sure you can see those layers. Like that. If not, if you just do a little bit, you'll run through and you'll, you know, you'll fill the edge. Now that's feathered out. Before we start putting our filler on, those two twenties are a little too fine for the filler, so I just got some old 80 grit and just kind of keep it up in here where we're even putting that filler. Get some good scratches. Got a little body filler spreader I just cut down because I don't need anything big. And, and make sure you kind of push on your first one there because you want to push into those scratches. And then you come back over a little lighter. You want to kind of build it up. Dry. Now I'm using is it's just a paint stick that I just cut down because we want to try to keep it centralized to where a repair area is. So then I'm just going to wrap some 80 grit just to knock it down. Starting to hit some metal right here. Uh, so now, same thing, but 180 wrapped around it.
Okay, now this is pretty close. Now, if you're going to be using your spray can primer, you'd want to stop this about now and then use some 320 and finish it up. And then that'll help with the shrinkage later on. It's going to be a lot finer scratches, so it's not going to show nearly as much. But I'm not going to do that with this. And the other thing, if you're going to be using the spray can primer, is you definitely want to feather this out again a little bit better with 320. Now, once we got that done, we're getting ready to prime. Uh, so what I like to use is a red Scotch Brite, and you want to make sure you go out farther. Then where you think your primer is gonna go, because if it, that primer gets on anything that hasn't been scuffed up, it's, it's gonna just start peeling off. It's not gonna stick. And blow it off. Okay, now back masking is you fold the paper over so it, when you prime it and you get towards that edge, it'll give it a soft edge instead of a hard edge. The hard edge is going to be harder to sand out, and a lot of times you think you might have it out, but then you go to refinish it and you will still see that edge. So, right here, put it down here. I'm go a little farther out than that. Then fold it back. Okay, I'm gonna use the grass or the wax and grease remover here. One more time, just to clean this up a little bit. Wipe it on and then wipe it off with clean part of the rag. I'm just using paper towels. Okay. And now I'm using epoxy primer. See where this metal is exposed? You really don't want to be putting your primer directly to that metal. So like I said, I'm using epoxy. Um, if you're not using epoxy, you say we're doing the rattle can, uh, use some self etching primer on here first. You don't want it heavy though with the self etching primer, just a light coat over where the metal is. Let that sit for about 10 minutes and then, then use your rattle can primer over that. So I'm going to hit this with some epoxy and I'm probably going to let this sit for a good half an hour before I put uh, my filler primer over it. To get around the edges here too. This is a place where later on it's going to try to lift on you where you broke through. That epoxy's dry for about half an hour, so we're going to start putting the filler primer on. You know, you don't want to get it on super heavy and make sure you let it dry in between coats. Spray can primer. This is black. I like to use this for a guy coat. It tends not to clog up uh, sandpaper when you go to block this out. So, just do some of that. And then that will show you when we go to block this out with 400 grit. That will show where your scratches are still at. So you just keep blocking until that black disappears. 
And so now we're going to want to let this sit overnight. If you're using spray can primer for all this, the longer you can let it sit for you block it out, the better. So, I mean, if you're doing it in the summertime and you're not be getting any rain, you know, for weeks, I'd let it sit for weeks. Uh, cause same with the filler primer, it's not waterproof, so it will let moisture get behind it and start rusting, even though you even use that self-edging primer. With epoxy behind this, that seals it off, but if you're not using epoxy, this will let moisture get behind it. So if you're going to be raining, you better just do it right away or you're going to be looking for other problems. So anyways, we're going to let this sit overnight before we block it. Uh, but while we're waiting for that, we're going to prep the rest of this panel here. All right, while we're waiting for that primer to dry, like I said, we're not going to deal with it till tomorrow, but we're going to get the rest of this panel prepped. Uh, so I masked off all the areas where I don't want to get scuffed. And disclaimer, I'm sure people will say, well, the correct way to do it is you're supposed to remove all this stuff. Well, this is a job for a buddy. He doesn't want to spend that much money. And the truth of the matter is, as long as you take the time and pay attention and get it scuffed all up in these corners, you're not going to have a problem. I mean, I've done many jobs like this. And five years down the road, there's nothing peeling. It still all looks good. But like where I put this tape, make sure you don't have the tape on the paint. It's just a little bit above. Um, but yeah, I'll show you me scuffing it. What I'm using is a scuffing gel with a gray scotch bright pad with water. Uh, and another budget thing you can do if you're on a budget is I've used like Ajax or Comet before. That's got a little bit of grit to it. I, and it's a cleaner, so it'll help clean the panel to get any kind of grease, oil, or whatever else off. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start scuffing this now. So I'm just gonna rinse it. If you buy this trim, make sure. That's why I mask it off, so I can really push and get it up under there and make sure it gets scuffed. Kind of using my fingernail to make sure I get up, up in there. Hey, right, once you got all that stuff, you're gonna want to wash this stuff off. I'm still using just rinsed off that scotch brake pad, and I got some clean water. I'm just gonna want to. Flood it. Let the stuff run down. <laughs> All right, it's the next morning, and we are going to block out this primer. I'm just using 400 grit on a block. Uh, you could use a paint stick too for this. That would work also. And you can see in here that's showing where the scratches are. The the black guide coat still in there. So you want to keep sanding until those are out. And then if you hit bare metal, you're gonna want to stop and then. Uh, you want to reprime it a little bit again. Okay, we're gonna hit it with the greaser one more time and uh, we're gonna repaint it. Okay, I've hit it with a sealer. I just use epoxy primer again as a sealer. Um, you can get a sealer and a spray can too, but you're definitely going to want to seal that area off before you start painting it or else you're probably going to start get wrinkling around the repair area. So when you let that sit for a good half hour and then uh, we can start painting it.
Okay, we got it all painted. So now I'll just do a little buffing on it and we'll call it done. And that's how you properly fix a gouge or chip paint.